Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord, thank you because you, you made me to recall something this morning. You said to me, I should remember. <laughs> As I said, good morning to the Father this morning. And he said, there are three of us. <laughs> and I said, good morning, Holy Spirit. I heard another voice. Good morning, Lord Jesus. I heard another voice. And I was like, three different, three in one. I was so amazed and, ah, and I was like, Lord, and he said, you have forgotten, you have forgotten. You have forgotten. Many times we forget who the Holy Spirit is. We forget that he is actually the power of God. He's the one that shows Jesus to us. He's the one that shows the Father to us. He's the one that is demonstrating everything to us right now. He hears from Jesus and he speaks to us. He hears from the Father and he speaks to us. You know, he tells us what is going on. He's the one who is making them manifested to us. He's the one making them real to us. He's the one bringing them to us and making us to understand, you know, to see. So tonight we are praying. I've been bothered for a few days, for about two weeks about something you know something God told me last year and then this year I saw it come to pass and it shook me to my roots it shook me it shook me so much it shook me so much I, I, I I'm not sharing this to degrade anybody or to anybody but to bring to the reality of what is going on Last year, somebody, a wonderful, supposed wonderful person in the body of Christ helped me. He helped me. He, he did something for me. And ah, came to see me in a situation that was bad. But when he came, the... The thing that 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 you know, I was I was in the depths of of sorrow, and then the next thing that this person would try to do was to grab me, and I fought him off, and I was shocked to my roots because this person is somebody so respected. And it bothered me and I was like, Lord, what is going on? And the Lord said to me, just keep quiet. I was tempted to like, you know, report and you know, you know how people yeah, I talk to my friend or something and the Lord said, shut up. And this person continued to behave like there was nothing wrong and you know, and that kind of a thing. So I just said, Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord said, just cut him off. That's all. I said, you don't want me to see anything, you know, but and I kept, I was bothered. But he realized, I said, ah, this is, this is what? And then we, I discussed one or two things, you know, with him that look, this is what is going on in the world now. You know, you need to you know, get sorted out. But I did not press in because the Lord was, Lord was not allowing me to press in, you know. But I kept on seeing that this man was on the, you know, he was in danger. He was in danger. And then all of a sudden, within some months, was in danger. I could see him going on. He, you know, he just passed. Ah! 
and I've been asking the Lord, Lord, where is he? What did he make it? Did he come out of the, you know, of the chains? Because, you know, so respected and playing along, playing on this this charade, this charade of, of, of being good and being okay in the body of Christ, being called and, you know, whatever names, that this and that and, oh, my God. And I kept on, my heart was sinking and I was saying, Father, speak to me. And the Lord was saying, you've done your part. Shut up. And I said, God, is this how it is going to be? People living double, triple lives. Ah, so heavy as a God. And they are doing, you know, and oh, we will be doing this burial and the coniums will be going up and down and we are, oh my God. And I said, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me, oh Lord. I was like, blame myself, Father. Why? I didn't speak to him enough. I did not shake him enough. I did not shout on him. I did not do this. I did not do that. And the Lord said, no. It was not your place. And I said, okay, Lord, did he make it? No answer. Got silence. <laughs> silence. And they said, the Lord said to me, more and more, I told you that I'm a businessman. And I trade, and you, and he asked me a question that shocked me. He said, "What is the profit that you think I want to make?" Here, yeah? I said, "We have just finished talking about you being a businessman. You are talking to me that you you trade." Mm -hmm. Then he said, "There are trading flaws in the spiritual realm." Ah. I said, what are we trading? Oh, what exactly is going on? He said, they're trading the lives of men. That was why that that woman, that woman that was sitting on the, that, that one that had mystery Babylon written on her, what was she doing? Selling the lives of men, trading with the lives of men. And there is trading going on in the spirit. And there is a period, this particular period we are in, there is so much trading. That is why you cannot sleep when you are supposed to cannot sleep now when God wants to speak things into your spirit you cannot sleep Holy Spirit we call upon you tonight help us shake us awake Lord shake us awake <laughs> and you said to me tonight you said to me at a prayer meeting where I joined a prayer meeting for Nigeria where oh so many people it was like almost a thousand people on that call tonight you know all of a sudden people just woke up you know and i mean god has been waking up people and all that and you know all the people so-called titled people and everything everybody is waking up and they think that okay it is these three days that is doing it is not oh. the people that are pressing in and they, they are not even known they don't even have a name and the ones that god are used is using right now to push to say no Stand and say no, speak. The very few voices in the courts of God, where nations, where the destiny of nations are decided. Very few, very few. But they don't know that, that it is the call of those few people that has brought them to wake up and begin to so called hear God. And they, they are, you know, they are alarmed, like, oh, is this what is happening? They have just woken up. But you know, the thing, the thing that bugs me, the thing that, that caught my heart, the one that is shaking me to my roots right now, that I'm asking the Lord, Lord, what do you mean? He said to me, he said, do you know that many of them, I'm going to call them home? And I said, why, Lord? And he said, <laughs> he said, because if I let them be, they are going to derail the next move. So some of them, their assignments are finished. I said, Father? That's what I heard today. I don't know who is who, and I'm not mentioning names or anybody, but that is what I heard. That's what he told me today. And I'm like, Lord, you know, and oh, Jesus. And I'm Lord, what do you want us to do? 
Father, help us. Tonight, help us. Oh Lord, wake us up. Help us to be serious with you. He was explaining to me, he said, I'm a businessman and that is why me, I, do away, I can do away with the whole nation of people when they don't bring profit. This is what he did with the Israelites in the wilderness. He reminded me. He removed them completely. And he didn't stop them. Did you ever read anywhere where God said he regretted himself that day? He regretted them, you know, clearing out the whole nation of Israelites and waiting for their children to grow up so that he can use them. He didn't regret it too. You have to understand that God, you see, sometimes we feel that God is an, you know, he's so emotional. You know, we, we feel that God is a sissy. He's not. Mm -mm, he's not. His principles are written there in his, in his word and he does not violate them. He does not. He's not going to change them for you. So if you like at this time, be making, you know, He's telling you something and he's been telling you for one week, one week, one week, one week, and you are not doing, you know, he's a businessman. He will go to where profit will come. You will be left there with all your prophecies that he gave you and he would have gone. He would have gone. He's not lowering his standards for anyone. I, I took, look, it took me years to understand that thing. And it was so hard. It was, it, it took me years to understand that God is not emotional like we think he is. Yes, he gave us emotions. He did. But he does not express those emotions the way we think he does. We have similar, we can feel him. We can feel his pain. We can feel his heart. We can cry. We can do all that. And, and God sings. Yes, we can sing because God sings. We are like him, yet we are not. And that's where we make a lot of mistakes. And that's where a lot of people who are evangelists, prophets, who have been given offices to operate in for the form, to bring the church to the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ, to bring the church to the maturity that is supposed to be, that is where they miss it. They equate the gifts to being, you know, like God. They equate the gifts, the manifestations of these things. The prophecy you gave yesterday, so what? What does it make you? The evangelists that you were, when thousands and millions gave their, their hearts to Jesus, mm -hmm, was being done by the Holy Spirit because in spite of you, he will use you in certain things to do what he wants. And then if you still continue to decide to do what you want, he will move shop. He will go somewhere else. He will anoint someone else to do what he wants. As for me, like for me, it took me time to understand See, I am not going to be called by anybody to become anything, to be recognized anywhere. Yet, he has given me a voice in his courts. I treasure that more than anything that I can ever have, ever. Because I see it in manifestation and I'm so... I am so humbled, I'm so grateful, I, I dare not. I'm not even, I just want to be close to him. I just want to stay, yes, yeah, so I just want to do what he says per minute, per second. I keep asking him, so now, Lord, what do you want? What is your will? What exactly are we, are we talking about right now? Yes, he's turning things around in the spiritual at this moment. If you, if you can just imagine how the kingdom of darkness is frantic. Look, they are doing massive, <laughs> massive ceremonies right now. In fact, today, they are beginning, at this moment, right now, they are doing it 
And the Lord is calling us to prayer. Why? Because as we speak to him, as we stay in his presence, as we stand with him, just listening to his voice, just doing what he wants, he is using us. We are his weapons of war. We are his battle axes. Now, because there is something going on. I feel it. I, there is something going on. There is a shift coming. There is a war going on. There's a trading in the spirits. And many are selling their souls without knowing it. They're selling their souls. It's all over. A massive ceremony in the kingdom of darkness. And some Christians are even helping them celebrate it, not knowing that they have sold their souls. Because in the spiritual, to sell your soul is very easy. A token, and they've gotten you. They've taken you. There was a time the Lord spoke to me. He taught, taught me this. He said, in the spiritual, in fact, you take money from someone that you should not take money from. You've sold your soul without knowing it. You begin to pray, Father, thank you. Look, the times are evil, the days, this particular days from now, even within the next two weeks and the things that God is going to begin to teach us tonight. Listen, let your ears be open. Let your understanding come forth in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, Lord, open my eyes, my ears, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I may hear your voice, that I may hear you. Help me, Lord, that I may hear your voice as you speak, as you teach us, oh God. Help me that I may hear you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Spirit, help us to pray and to pray aright. We surrender ourselves, energize us to be able to enter into the place of rest that you have prepared. You said we should labor to enter into that rest. Lord, tonight we labor to enter into that rest, Lord. We labor, Lord. Hey, Holy Spirit, help us. I do not want to be left behind, Lord. Lord, oh Lord, help me to enter into the things, oh God, that you have designed, that you have spoken, that you have worked out already. Lord, help me to enter in, Lord, that my senses, oh God, will be heightened the way you want them to be in this time, that I will discern your hand, I will discern your way, I will discern your voice. In the name of Jesus, I will discern and I will know what you are saying per time, Lord. I will know what you are saying per situation, Lord. I will know what you are saying, Lord, in per season, Lord. I will not be carried away by the things of the world, by the things that are happening around by the things that the chaos i will not be carried away i will not be carried away by the so-called singing celebrations i will focus on your word to hear your word to do your word lord in this time and in this season lord in the name of jesus the next few days lord even as you teach us even as you open our eyes to hear from you to hear, Lord, from your children, Lord, the words that you are going to be giving to them, Lord, that will sharpen us, that will cause us, oh God, to be sharper than a two-edged sword, to be where you want us to be, to, to let ourselves, oh God, be your weapon, to let ourselves, oh God, be your battle axe, Lord, in the name of Jesus, help us, oh God, so that when you wake us up in the night, or when you, when you, when you tell us to go and sleep, because Lord, you want to do something with us, with 
with our spirit. You want us to go somewhere. You want us to do certain things. Or you tell us, Lord, to kneel. Or you tell us, I separate yourself. There is something that I need to do. Oh, Lord God, we will be your God, your tools. Because, Lord, in the beginning, you said, let them have dominion. And, Lord, you have never violated your word. Because you said, let them have dominion over everything. You made, you made yourself, Lord, illegal on earth. And only through Jesus were you able to come and to rectify everything so that you could have many sons. And Jesus became the first bun from the dead. Father, Ah, your children. We are born into that. We are born into that priesthood. We are born into that lineage. And now, Lord, you can come on earth legally through us. Tonight, Father, I yield myself to you. I yield my life to you, Lord. I yield everything, Lord, to you. Lord, use as you please that you may make profit. Lord, thank you. Holy Spirit, I was asking, Lord, from these ones, these ones who have they had done so much for you. He asked me a question. He said, how many of them can I hear their voice? They are speaking words, but I cannot hear them. So because I cannot hear them, I cannot do what they desire. Lord. Ah. Big churches, mega churches. And I ask, Lord, but so much is going on. You're doing wonderful things. You're blessing people. You're doing that and you're doing this. And he said, is that the criteria? Lord, help us that we may hear you in this season and obey and be ready to be with you when you say you want us to be with you, Lord. Father, help us. That we will not take you for granted. Oh, I remember so many times when I took God for granted. I took him for granted. I took his voice for granted. I thought everybody heard his voice that way so I could just misbehave. I could just do what I like. I could just, you know, Go ahead and look for whatever will satisfy the longing in my so-called heart. I could not even tell what was in my own heart because I never asked. Oh, my Jesus. And when, I, when he allowed me to go my way and do my own thing and he stopped talking, <laughs> I knew the difference. I knew the difference. But many are not going to have that opportunity in this season to be able to return to him. That is the scary thing. It's scary. It's scary when some people are going to say they're going to turn back. The love of many are going, is going to wax cold. It's happening already. Yes. Many people may be joining together praying concerning Nigeria, this and that. And when the Nigeria, the new Nigeria comes and things you know, begin to happen, many will be missing. Many will not be there. Many. It is a privilege to be able to come to the Lord. It is a privilege to hear his voice in our hearts by his word. By his spirit, it is a privilege to be washed by the water of his word. It is a privilege to hear his voice according to his word. 
it is a privilege to be able to hear that word that confirms his word, that is confirmed by his word. It is a privilege. Lord, we do not take you for granted tonight. We are sorry for all the ways we are taking you for granted. Have mercy, Lord. The wonderful things that you want to do with us, the beautiful things that you want to give us, the powers of the age that you want to release, but you cannot release just anyhow. Even the little that we are experiencing, some of us have gotten carried away. Ah, just because you can hear the heart of people, you know, you have gone astray. You, you become something else. Hey, Lord, help us. Help us to know when you are doing your thing and when you are not. Lord, to understand when to move and when not to move. To understand when to speak and when not to speak. Oh, hey. mm. Father, have mercy. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on you, Lord. Have mercy on me. Help me, Lord, to be able to show forth because you are, you are looking for the children that will show forth your glory. But you don't put your glory. It is not the smoke that they are pretending to generate in churches these days. It isn't that smoke, you know, the smoky white, this in entertainment and the lights, you know, they say, you know, and you begin to wonder what's going on, what's happening. And the Lord said, why do they pretend? Hypocrites. That my glory is here. When the glory of God comes in, no man will be able to stand. We have not experienced yet. We have not, we are not broken enough yet. I cry every day and ask myself, Lord, please break me more. Help me. Don't let me, don't let me do my thing. Please, not now. I am so, so careful. Yes, but I have learned that it is not me being careful. It is me letting him. It is me letting him live through me. Let him live. Let him live. Let him be alive through me. So I let him. When he says this, I, I do. When he says that, I do. We talk every day. Minute. I remember. Yes, I used to have a time of time with God. Okay, this is time with God. This is time with God. And it continued and continued. Then one day he told me, he said, that time is not enough. I want to be able to talk to you every time. I said, eh, how are we going to do it? He said, don't worry. Just surrender, agree. And so sometimes somebody is talking to me. Sometimes I'm not hearing them. I'm just hearing what the Lord is telling me concerning what the person is saying. He has become more real to me than anything else. I cannot sell him for anything. I don't care if I have to sleep on the street, if I don't have anywhere to live. I cannot sell him for anything. I cannot. I've gone too, too, too much. I cannot. It, it, it's impossible to return. Let the Lord take you to a place where there is no going back. Some of us are still shaking. We are wondering, okay, let us see. Because I have worshipped this God, I have served him, yet no produce, no nothing is coming out. Hmm? Really? Please, tonight is, is, is a different season. I don't know how, how, how to explain this thing, this, this relationship with God. I, I don't know how to explain it to anybody. People around me here, I keep quiet most of the time. I let them do their thing because it is not easy. It is not, it is, I cannot explain it in any, I cannot tell them that, you, you know, God told me this uh, yesterday concerning this uh, country or this nation. And, uh, you know, this is what it's about. You know, <laughs> when I came here and I told them, I, I, I mentioned, I mentioned one day to someone that, look, you know, you know this thing, this thing that uh, is being given, this thing that is being given. Do you know that, uh, you know, God told me that it's fake. He's going to fail. Ah, the person shouted at me. 
What do you mean? We prayed and we asked God for a miracle. And this is the miracle. I said, really? I said, okay. I said, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Have we not seen it now? And God is still saying more. There's still plenty more that is being said. Many, much more. And he wants to speak to all of us, all of us, all of us. So that when I speak to you, you will say, ah, yes, truly, the Spirit of God has spoken to me. Oh, yeah, what are we supposed to do? He will give us instructions. Because these are the days of his manifestation of his Spirit. But in his own way, in his own way, the church... The church, the church. He's building his own church. Not the one you think, oh, not the one you think. Not the ones with names that you think, no. Mm -mm. He is building his church. Are you part? I begged him. I begged him the day he showed me the army. Ah, I begged. I said, Lord, please. I want to be part of this army. And he, has, he answered my prayer. But you see the price, the price, there's a price. They loved not their life to death and they overcame by the word of their testimony by the blood of the lamb by the blood of the lamb and they loved not their life unto death that is the criteria Lord, tonight we surrender afresh. As you teach us your word, as you bring your word to us, Lord, help us to, to, to receive it. Let our hearts be open, Lord. Let our hearts be open to hear your voice, to hear your word. And uh, let the Spirit of God encamp over all of us. Brood over us, Holy Spirit, tonight. Brood over us. Brood over us and bring us forth. Brood over us and bring us out. Brood over us and cause us to sit with the lamb on the throne. That we may see things from your perspective. From your way. From your place. Lord, that will cause our heart, Lord, to stand continuously, Lord, with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, Lord. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We bow our hearts once again and ask that you will touch us in again, in our hearts, that you will touch us once again, in our hearts, touch us, O oh Lord, once again. Touch us, O oh Lord, once again. Wake us up, O oh Lord, once again. Touch us, O oh Lord, once again. In our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Receive our hearts, Lord. Receive us all in the name of Jesus tonight. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You cannot do if you have never become. Doing in the kingdom means first becoming. Put differently, anyone that takes doing ahead of becoming is an imposter. 
and does not have a place in the kingdom. And that is why God is insisting on your life being aligned to him. That is why God is taking you through the difficult way and the narrow gate. Because you have to become first before you can be. Unfortunately, a lot of us die on the pathway of becoming. Because the last thing that you have to give up to become is your very own life. There are seven things that will be demanded from you on the way to becoming. Your father will be demanded of you. Your mother will be demanded of you. Your brother will be demanded of you. Your sister will be demanded of you. Your children will be demanded of you. Your wife will be demanded of you. And your life will be demanded of you. There is no sitting on the fence. And the most difficult of all the seven is your own life. It is a natural Adamic state of nature for man to love his own life more than anyone else. I'm here to see that man that will not love himself more than anyone else. And that is the opposite of the kingdom principle. The kingdom DNA is you must not love your life unto death. Unfortunately, the role is being called in heaven and the role has been called on earth. And God will not regret his position. The role is being called in heaven. This is 2022. I said it in 2019 and 2020. More of God's so-called generals will die. More of them. Young and old. More of them. God cannot use them in the next generation, in the next season that has begun already with a beautiful chaos. Case in point is Nigeria. Most, if not all, of the names that you are hearing today will not make it to the new Nigeria. They will not make it to the new Nigeria. They have no place in the new Nigeria. Whatever name you are hearing, unfortunately, it is not of man to decide. God, who has decided the rule, has already called it. Sadly enough, those that are to feature in this season of life, there are very few eating in plain sight and on Azure. And they know that the art of war in this season is not a show of power or macho. It is wisdom through the Holy Spirit that will make for the winning streak in this season. And so a lot of people will die on their way to becoming. That difficulty that you are going through, and it's looking like you are the only one that the whole life is upon. <laughs> it's because there is a serious contention over your life. There is a trading going on. <laughs> There is a trading going on. Heaven is trading. Hell is trading. 
the earth is trading. There is trading going on. There is a price on every head. Don't sit down there and say, oh, not my own, minus me. You know the way we talk. There is a price on your head. There is a price on my head. The reason Jesus is coming to you and coming strong is so that he can be the price of your head. Such that when the devil knocks and he knocks to a point, he won't see you again. He won't see me again. He will see Jesus. And the only way you can do that is through the word of life that will knock out every flesh out of you and knock you into the spirit and begin to build himself from inside of you. But unfortunately, you are screaming. You are shouting. It is hot. It is hot. Can it be a bit colder? Can it be a bit colder? It is hot. Is it only me? I thought I was out of this. How can this happen to me? Is it only me? Oh, it is hot. It is hot. It is hot. Whatever you lose today, listen to me. You don't need it. Whatever you lose today is a test of your faith. Whatever you lose today, oh my God, has that tendency to lose you if you ever had it. But before I go very, very far into the into today, I, I want to I want to follow the instruction of the Holy Spirit. I want to follow the instruction of the Holy Spirit. I'm in a great company. I'm in a great company. And I talk that I don't want any stage. When I say I don't want any, I don't want any popularity, I don't want anything. It looks like how I'm mad. See, you are hearing it from another person in time. <laughs> oh my God. And you know the the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. You will pray to die. You will just pray. You just tell God, you know what? Take me out of here. I don't, I don't even want to sit next to any human skin. I, I don't want to. Until he begins to teach you humility. To begin to restrain your heart. To begin to restrain yourself. Because by the time you get to the teaching of the trading of the profitability metrics of God in him, you will understand that it's totally different from the earth. And you will know the reason why you are having access to some vital files of human hearts. They are thinking, they are feeling, they are thoughts. You can feel them. You can be words on spoken words. You can bring it out. Okay. Now you think it's for self-aggrandizement. If you don't know the purpose for which it's given, you are not different from the herbalist. Through the Spirit of God, we received some vital information today. And I've gotten permission from the, the person I spoke with uh, or the person who spoke with me through the spirit of God. The person was disturbed to, have, to share some things with me for which I, uh, I am eternally grateful. Sam, you have to receive the help that comes from heaven. See, when God knocks on my door through few people on earth, it strengthens my heart that I, I have a place in heaven. When God begins to send people to you from far away, few people, very few on Azumi, they begin to knock and they tell you, uh, the father said I should share something with you. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. In this season, God has placed some people in this generation that where they are, that's where the whole world will come to hear them. 
There is no point marketing, promoting yourself. The world will have to reduce their noise to hear them because they are speaking as God is giving them utterance to. I want to give you a little insight into what is happening in the world right now. And you are privileged. I am privileged. And I'm grateful. Because not too many people know what is happening. There is panic everywhere in the world. Not only in Nigeria. There's serious panic in the world. And I can tell you, it's a beautiful chaos. Because just when the enemy thinks is having some shows going on, just when the enemy feels that there are movement going on, again, the foolish man has is been, is been taken in his game. I told you about, the, the, about Satan, about the devil, the quality assurance manager. He puts up all his energy into a venture that he, he is seeing success, but the success of that venture is, is eventual failure because that's exactly what God needs him to do. So he's doing what God needs him to do. But he has not become a son of God. So he's an imposter. Do you see now how he has darkness become angel of light? And he's an imposter because he can never become. And so if you as a child of God, or if anybody as a child of God will not become by the help of God and is emphasizing on doing and is doing it, then he has joined the bandwagon of workers of iniquity that Jesus will tell that day, I do not know you. And he will say, in your name we did, in your name we heal, in your name we did this. He will tell them, leave me alone and get away from me because they did not become in their quest to do, they lost their desire to become. Don't ever trade your desire to become a son of God for your ability to do wonders. Don't ever, in your entire Christian life, don't ever. I'm satisfied if I don't raise a dead. I'm satisfied if I don't have an empire. I'm satisfied if nobody knows me as a preacher in my generation. As long as I have become a son of God, I am okay. JK is okay. <laughs> If you know me very well, if there's anything God has done inside of me that is very evident in my life, is that I have been delivered from any desire to impress anybody in my generation. Completely, I'm the last person that you ever come to to impress you. You have bought a very bad market. If you meet me in your marketplace where they are selling impression, know that that market will explode. The day you see me there, that's the end of it. Oh, I wasn't like that before. Oh, no. I was everywhere. You, you guy. <laughs> man's man, ladies' man, everybody's man. Show up everywhere. I have the carry, the ability to carry myself. But I love the spotlight. Come on. <laughs> but the day Jesus did that work, 2000, I will never forget. It's 22 years now. And I've never looked back since then. Don't want your stage. I don't want anything. There's nothing you can give me. I don't want it. As long as it's from this earth. He that is of the earth is earthly. And that's it. No matter how it is. I don't want it. So when people feel left out in something, I just look at them. I, I feel for them. Like... Professor was sharing with us. I really feel for them because you have to be careful. You don't show it because it's borderline ego, it's borderline, uh, you know, <laughs> humility and pride. They are very. It's a very thin line between the same thin line between divination and divinity. The same thin line between miracle and magic. That's the same thin line between humility and pride, and that's the same thin line between the Son of God and, you know. Uh, being born again of corruptible seed and being born again of incorruptible seed. There's a lot to unpack tonight. And I, 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 I hope you are here for the long haul. <laughs> oh, my. 
See, when God comes and says, learn to rest, what you should, what you did not hear him say that is indirectly saying is that there is a lot that I want to discuss with you. So when it came yesterday like that, I knew that <laughs> the gear has changed. The gear has changed. So let me share to you with you what is currently happening in the world from the perspective of heaven. This was what I received from one of us. When you look around, I don't know how to check names of people that are present, but whoever is present today, as a matter of fact, I mean, I congratulate you. <laughs> I really congratulate you. Um, so I will read out what we shared because of the information exchange that I perceive came from heaven to the earth and stood in between the two of us as we were speaking. God, through this person, was able to uh, manifest his heart uh, to us in the course of prayer or discussion. Yeah, no prayer, discussion. And we'll read. Massive movement by the enemy in unleashing evil by ceremonies all over the world. Men transporting themselves into others to manipulate them to do the evil they want. They are causing all kinds of chaos all over the world. Father told me to share this with you. He gave instructions to cut their cord that attached them to their bodies if they dare to move out. Now that is the first thing I want to talk about and we're going to pray. So let's take Nigeria, for example. A um, few days ago, or yeah, a few days ago, we were praying and I started saying to us that I perceive a rumor coming and I perceive that the fear of the rumor will kill people, will keep more people than the rumor itself. And I also said that the rumor is not, is not to be taken like it. I said that clearly. You may go and listen to that. And I said, I think a day or two after, we started hearing rumor of maybe some threats, some attacks, and blah, blah, blah. Some you know, developed countries moving their people away and all of that. Now, in the midst of that, you find some Christians gathering together to say, let us pray, we need to pray, we need to do this, we need to do that. One of those, uh, I think there was a Nigeria platform, uh, one, of, one of the you know, uh, top people invited me and say, oh, I do not mind. I, you can take my slots so that you can lead prayer in the, you know, in the platform for, ni for Nigeria. And the Lord said to me, I don't want to, I don't want to see you there. I don't ever want to see you there because a lot of them they are running a far far brigade approach when i needed them when i was looking for them to show them what is going to happen they were nowhere to be found they were serving themselves and their ministries and their desires now the Beautiful chaos has started. My work has started through the enemy, through everybody upon the face of the earth. I'm using everybody, using the devil, using everyone to bring about my own order. They are running out of skelter. Now they want to know their mind. Please, a word of caution for you. Each time you don't settle down to hear from God when he needs to speak with you, you miss out an opportunity to be one of his army when the real war starts. And by then, it will be too late for you to, to even see him in his calm, in his patient form to tell you and to explain to you what is happening. It is a time of peace that will prepare for war. 
whenever he's calling you to tell you, when God, when Trinity was talking to Abraham under the, under the mulberry tree or terebin tree or whatever, mamre tree, tree of mamre, when, when, when they were talking to him about Sodom and Gomorrah, nothing had started. They were about to go. If Abraham did not open, uh, lift up his eyes by the help of God to see them that day, when they start raining down fire in Sodom, they will have no time to talk to Abraham. By then, Abraham will be running elder scatter because of his nephew that is there. But this opportunity that presented itself, Abraham listened. Abraham was available and they were explaining everything to Abraham and Abraham engaged them on that basis. Now, a lot of people are asking, what must we do? That's the most annoying question I'm, I'm, I'm hearing in this season. 2018 was the first time I said something like this. And very few other people were saying things like that. 2019, at that time, nobody, the, I remember the first time when I said the, 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 a righteous man will become the president of Nigeria without election. I, I remember the church that I said that, and I, and I remember the reaction from fellow Christians when they heard that. Today, these same people are running their task to say, what should we do, what should we do? A few years ago, I reiterated what the law said. It's all this election that you were banding around, it's possible there is no election. I remember the, the, the comment, I remember the, the, what I... <laughs> I remember one of the one of one of the people of God that we so respect in our generation, you know, he was telling me, okay, you say that we line up three or four people and we ask you to help us find the heart of God. And you came back, you say, none of them. So what do we, what do we advise our people? And I told him, sir, with all due respect, must you advise them to vote for somebody? Can't you advise them on what God has told you? Will you die if you tell them what God is doing? Because when I got home, the Lord said, don't ever give people like that audience anymore. And I said, why? But they are your son. He said, well, they are my supposed son. I have done the rule call. I have called them home. They don't want to come. Because some of them have told me that they have not finished what I gave them to do. And he told me, he said, son, a lot of people they set exams for themselves. The assignment I give to them has finished according to me that gave the assignment. But they created assignments within assignment so that they can keep themselves here, so that they can extend the, the harm of their territories and empires here, so that they can keep you know, preserving their own uh, stool here. And they raise some form of doctrinal, whatever, to keep people. And they set up this place they call church. But alas, it's charismatic zoom. A, move, a movement that has become monument, and when they die, it will scatter. Mark my word. No church that is standing today and is measuring itself in number and not by the cross of Jesus that is measuring itself by how they are, they are speaking in tongues and how they are, they, are, they, are, they are having big branches and fat accounts, no movement like that will remain. And when the founder dies, all of them will break. All of them, all the names you are hearing today, all of them will break. And that was when God said to me that a lot of them have even had the effrontery to come and knock on my door to tell me, Lord, we sense that you are doing something. Whatever you are doing, don't do it without us. And I said to them, also, what kind of effrontery? So what if I don't do it without you? Then he said one of them responded to him, then don't do it at all. Did you just hear what I said? <laughs> Lord, I know that revival is coming. That's why I, I don't sing that song. Lord, whatever you are doing in this season, Please don't do it without me. I don't sing that song. It's very selfish. 
God will do what he will do with or without you. You become, your business is not to do, your business is to become by following him. That is selfish song. And these are songs we receive from God. I don't know where we receive it from. When our burden is not delivered from ego and self-aggrandizement and ambition. We release songs that, are, that, are, that only fuel the flesh, only empowers the Adamic nature. And they are banded everywhere. And they are singing it everywhere. It's a different song they are singing in every city. Different song that people are singing on earth. How can you stand before God and say, I sense that you are doing revival. I sense that revival is coming. It must come through my church. It must come through my... My, my church, if we, if we will not come through my church, don't let it come. What an effort. So what is happening in the world right now? There are some classified information that God is causing the enemy to release because there is a fight in the camp of the enemy. So when you hear something like, oh, there is a pipeline, uh, you know, a professional, there are many professional pipelines that are illegally tapping into Nigeria's oil resources um, and all of that, know that an imminent attack is coming. So all these terrorist attack and all of this, this buyer of those products, uh, the developed countries and <laughs> oh god and they want to distract the attention of africa and you see it won't they won't tell you that it's only one country they won't tell you i don't <laughs> oh my god do your research very well that threat scare is not only for nigeria i've not done any research i've not done anything in the spirit of god that is saying this to me it's not only nigeria go and find out very well they will put two, three countries by the side, but they know which country they are going for. They know which country of interest they are going for. Do not be deluded. If Nigeria breaks today, US will not come to your head. UN will not come to your head. Um, whoever, who again at the World World Bank or whatever you call them, they won't come to your head. Um, uh, nothing short of force, you know. Will nobody, NATO forces, whatever forces you call, nobody will come to your head. Because that is their plan. Somebody does not want to see a new Nigeria come up. Somebody does not want at all. And they are doing everything to distract you. And do you know what? In all of these, there are critical information that are coming out, classified information that have never been out before. You see a lot of them because they are fighting and trying to kill themselves. Now, in all of this, God does not want election to happen in 2023. 2023 is one way for Nigeria to receive mercy from God, such that the emergence of new Nigeria will begin. There is an independence that has happened, but there is another independence that must happen. A deliverance of Nigeria by Nigerians. That must happen. That must happen. But that will not happen until the deliverance of Nigerian Christians from Nigerian pastors and their so-called fathers and churches. That must happen first before this one happens. What I'm sharing with you is a very, very classified information and I want it recorded. Nothing should be edited, please. Leave it as it is. These are the days of Elijah sitting in his bedroom. Let, let us, let us. <laughs> okay, let me keep quiet. Men will know that there are 7,000 that God has kept. If you think that uh, 
you are the one that has title and you are entitled with your title. <laughs> Just know that there are some people they don't even have color at all. You, you say you have office. Some don't even have office. God has hidden them, I tell you. <laughs> they know the heart of God. They know the mind of God. They minister to God every day. Be careful. Be careful. And so God does not want election to happen. Now, surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, but interestingly, they too, these developed countries that have looted us, that has joined forces with our uh, 1% of 1%, uh, the privileged few in the corridors of power, both in church and in government. Mm -hmm. They know themselves. So, and they also, they do not want election to happen because they want Nigeria to destroy completely so that they can take the resources and treasure of this country. They have, they have, they have almost finished their home. When you begin to see the aged in a generation killing their children, and when you see high rate of kidnapping of children, know that that generation is cursed because that generation will be bereaved of future. That generation is eating up its future in time. And that's what is happening in most developing countries. When you begin to hear that children are, you know, are missing and all of that, they are, they are done with their own generation. They are going to feast on another generation, but they have forgotten that those that sit in the dark, they've seen the great lights. They have forgotten that the deliverance of the world is coming from Africa. Great massive light of God will come from Africa and will take over the whole earth. And in that day, the economy of Nigeria will run faster than that of Japan because there comes a tender plant from the side of the north. Where is this north? I'm not talking of northern Nigeria. I don't think I'm saying the next president will be a northern person. No, Mount Zion, the side of the north, the city of the great king, emergence of the righteous nation is here. And nobody can wish it away. God's plan for 2023 is to have a government that will be interested uh, it, it, to have a, a formation of a government that will not be without election. And the objective of that government will be to reconstitute Nigeria through the constitution. That's all. When that is done, that gives way for the emergence of a, of a, of a righteous nation. Because by that constitution being restructured already, there will be vacancies in major places in government and governance. The zeros that are heroes right now will be relegated back to zeros and we'll have a lot of vacancies. And for us not to have vacancy of righteous people to take over, that's why God is doing the operation inside of you and inside of me so that the righteous people are ready. And when there is vacancy, preparation meets opportunity. That's all. Nigeria, Nigeria has been decided. New Nigeria has been decided already. If election ever takes place, Nigeria will go into more captivity. So God is allowing them to come up with a lot of conspiracy against the nation he has chosen already so that what he wants will also happen. And that is, he does not want election. So he's using them, staging them up through fear and all of that. They think that by the time they put that fear in place and everything, the election will not take place and then there'll be chaos and everything. But what they don't know is that God has staged when and where it would hijack the process from them because he's the one that put it in their heart to do so in the first place. So this is the time to say, friend, like Jesus told the devil, friend, that which you are doing, do it quickly. But as you are doing it, the court that is threatening you to do it will cut it off from you. Whatever is giving you power, whatever is giving you energy, whatever you are leaning on, 
to kill the children, to destroy the widows, to feast on the innocent ones, and to go into the developing nations and to loot their future in, in, in collaboration with their own people in the land. Whatever is giving you the effrontery to do that, we, standing as God, God's uh, um, people upon the face of the earth, we remove, we dislodge, we destroy that call in the name of Jesus so that the, the backbone of your power will become your greatest undoing in the name of Jesus. Don't ever take your feet away from where God has planted you because by God having some few witnesses in a generation, it, it naturally the plan of the devil will be dislodged. What the enemy wants is total submission to their will, to their operation, to their government without any objection. Otherwise, you will ask yourself, why was it that even after everybody bowed to the God that Nebuchadnezzar erected, only three boys not bowing down infuriated him. What was it about those three boys? It was not so much about the boys as it was about the fact that there was an objection. When the enemy is ruling, he wants total domination. That's why I keep saying domination is different from dominion. He wanted everywhere to be dominated so that nobody, you won't even have any strength to have a different identity. So when in the world where oppression is going on and the world system wants to tap submission, you'll find a few people that are living their life according to the operations of heaven and they are totally different. Just by them being available, it will infuriate the enemy and they will come after them. So it's better, it's better you gain understanding of why the, why the things that are happening to you, why they are happening. So when they discovered the three Hebrew boys, they threw them into the fire. They increased the fire seven times because the Gazdeza had that fury and rage together. You can read the Bible. He was not angry. He was furious. He had rage to it. And then look at what he produced. For those that know their God, they shall be strong. They shall be strong. They shall be first. And they shall do expert. They shall be first. They shall do. They shall be first before they do. It is your becoming that can strengthen you in the midst of fire. It's not your doing. When you come into the midst of fire, everything that you have done will burn. Everything you have done will burn. Well, were this not the boys that prayed with Daniel? Why was it that Nebuchadnezzar forgot completely that this boy had been instrumental to his deliverance at one point or the other? Why did he suddenly forget that? Because doing does not rate you at all in times of, of, of temptation, in times of tension, in, in serious fire, and when you are baptized in water of affliction, what strengthens you is becoming, is what who you have become. That's why I keep saying, you better be interested in who you are becoming in this season. So when you understand what is happening, you will know the reason why uh, the cheese are being moved. It's not only Nigeria that they send that threat message to. It's not only Nigeria. I don't know the countries involved, but what counsel I received from the Lord is not only Nigeria. And they cannot take it out to give you to give to give it to Nigeria alone. People will think something is wrong. Do you understand? So they have to call other nations and band other nations together with it. But where they are actually going. Is Nigeria. Truth is, nothing will scatter this nation. Nothing. God has his own interest in this nation. Has his own interest in this nation. All you need to do is to, oh, okay. Confirmations are coming in South Africa as well. Burkina Faso, ah, you see now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. Ah, enemy money move fair. Oh Lord, who are like that? Oh, 
ara ko le sise mi o olu balage mi o that's the song that we used to sing when I was in the when I was in CSC Holy Spirit I want you the power of the highest I want you for the flesh cannot do the work of the spirit Holy Spirit invade me that's that's the meaning of the song <laughs> mm. We are hearing all that they are doing. The people that want to do the threats, they set them up. They have paid them already. I know the path payment that have, that have parted hands across Africa in euros and in dollars. I know the countries that, 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 that fronted for the major world power. Friend, whatever you are doing, do it very quickly because none of your counsel will stand. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But you know what? Those that will panic in this season, they will be the one that will die more. Because it is the fear of all the unknown that will kill men more than the incident itself. Stay where he has placed you. If you hear me very well, I kept saying yesterday, whoever pays your bill must be the one that has access to the whole of your time. You can hear when the when professor was talking about this, that God said, well, the time you have given me is not so, it's not enough. I want to talk. To God can say that to her because God is picking up the bill in our life. And God must have access to all of our time. Why? You will know when we get to the profitability matrix of heaven. It is an aberration and an insult that God will pick a bill of your life and you will give God just two hours and give yourself and your aggrandizing uh, 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 life that you call destiny or fulfillment or career or whatever it is, uh, and the devil by extension, 22 hours or the 24 hours. And you only give God two hours. He must own everything. It is the leftover that you allow you to give to others. If if they are not, if the developed countries are not in, in, in the negotiation of the act itself, how come they know the exact date? How come they are beginning to send a threat message that in about so, 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 so normal hard, in about this, 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 it actually takes somebody that is fully involved to have such information. Even if you say you have Intel, can't your Intel work with the Intel of the country of interest? to ensure that you dislodge it or you give them more information. Uh, <laughs> you see, those that know security operating, they will know very well that information that will really, you know, be, or, uh, uh, be working in your favor will not be shared publicly. Information that you share publicly, it is because you want to stage it and you want to upset the system, okay? And you want to make it look like you are giving them information, but you have set fear everywhere so that when it happens, you have, you have an edge already. The one that you have good intention about, you cannot be sharing it up and down like this. You will share it to the security operative of the country and you will work together to ensure that you get the corporate to book. But whenever you hear countries saying, no, this is what is happening, we are evacuating our people, more often than not, the countries that are doing that, they are the ones that are involved in it. But God has a plan. Because that which they are working for is what God actually wants to happen. Anyone that knows God very well, he will know. He will be praying that, God, please, don't let there be election. Don't let that be election. Because that's the mess. It will be 30 years by 2023 that hope 93, the false hope of, of a common man first emerged. Now the real hope, the real hope, Christ in you, the hope of glory, is about to show face in 2023 through an unusual way to save his people from themselves. Do you understand what is happening now? Do you get it? You understand what is happening, and you let me now tell you why they are so interested in doing this. 
because unknown to them, they thought they would be secured in their own environment. Did you hear me? Whoever heard me in 2021, uh, was it 2021 or at the beginning of this year that I said that uh, um, there won't be any country of safety economically as inflation will eat major currencies for launch. If you, if you heard me say that, please, can you indicate at the beginning of the year or late last year, I was talking about for those that says, oh, we can invest in dollar, we can invest in dollar. And I kept saying that the country, the safe currencies that we invest in, there will be inflation, it will sweep everywhere. There won't be any difference between investing in Naira and investing in many, in, in many. oh, okay, somebody has confirmed. So what they thought they would do was that while their own country is safe, they will up, they will set, you know, they will set yours on fire and take part of your resources to enrich themselves. Okay. But what God did was that God allowed an, a, an east wind to come, okay, to come upon the whole earth to scatter. So there was a lot of dislodgement that has now affected them and has now made them to accelerate their plan so that they will quickly cushion their own economy and buffer their own economy uh, you know, by making sure their plan quickly work. Do you, do you understand now? So that's why they are, too, they are really interested. They want to take your greatest energy, who are your youths, to take them to come and work over there, to take them to come and leave, to take them for so many things and all of that. And as they are doing that, God is also interested in that one too. And God has, has start, God is taking his time to send his own sheep in wolf clothing. He's sending them into their midst. So they are packing people. They don't know that Daniel is in the midst of them. They don't know that Esther is in the midst of them. They don't know. They don't know at all. Now, they, there will be an implosion from their own economy. And in many, many years to come, the sons of these people will take over their reins of power and the parishion will start. The thing they've stolen will come back. Oh, watch what God is doing. God has mapped out the next 100 years from now. This is the finest moment to see the trading platform of God come alive. Don't be despair. I remember many, 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 many years ago, in the midst of suffering, I said to God, why is it that when I just wake up, I don't do anything? I just wake up, I sleep, I wake up, I sleep. And God said, I'm allowing you because a time will come. You won't even have time to do anything. You won't have time to wake up. You won't have time to sleep. You won't know the difference between day and night. I look back today and I said, God, so this was what you meant. I didn't know. If only I had known, I would have used that period to sleep very well. What I, why am I saying this? Those of us that are feeling the heat right now, <laughs> use this time to rest well. As long as you are not lazy and you are investing your heart in God so that we begin, you will begin to add his wisdom into you, rest in him. Stay where he has placed you. If you have not found where he has placed you, find it out by calling for his help and asking him. He will show you if you are ready and genuinely ready. He will show you. Because whoever is picking up your beer in this season must have access to your full life. If the devil is the one picking up your bill, you cannot expect God to come for you. If God is the one keeping up your picking up your bill, you cannot go and work for the devil. It's not possible. So it's important that you understand this so that you don't join everybody to run up and down and you don't join people to pray fire brigade prayer you cut off from all those unfruitful prayers there's only when we are in despair like the children of Israel in the wilderness that's when you will now be crying to him crying to him crying to him a lot of people when they are crying God will give them what they want and that thing will kill them so be careful who your prayer partner is in this season pray in the spirit more and pray with men uh, just gather together to do via picket approach of a thing.
I know the person was must have been angry when I said to her, I'm not interested, count me out. And I really don't care. Spells, I don't really care. So if you understand it up to that point, I want to be sure that we understand it up to that point. Is it clear up to that point? I want to get many, many, I want to get more confirmation. So more people, if it's not clear, please ask your question now. Because I want to go to what you should be doing. Well, I've, I've already said that, but I will, I will emphasize it again. Everything you should be doing right now should be towards you becoming the true son of God. I have told you seven things will be requested from you. Sit down and count the cost now. No sitting on the fence because it will take your father. It will take your mother, it will take your brother, it will take your sister, it will take your children, it will take your wife or your husband. It will, it will take your life from you. you. Everything you are doing in this season must be towards becoming a son. Because it's only those that have become that it will, it will number. Those that are numbered will be given provision with vision. There is a sensor in heaven going on. God is there is a census, a national census in heaven of the citizen of heaven being, being numbered upon the earth. They are not counted, they are numbered. Because there is provision to every numbering. There is access, there is uh, asset relocation or allocation rather, or resource uh, requirement that is provided in heaven for these ones. So as you become, it gives you power to do. In becoming, you will know what you should be doing because you must know what you should be doing in this season. And where you start from is that you get yourself ready, brace up to minister to God first, much more than ministering to men. Shift your attention from men to God. Shift your attention, your base of request, your base of circle, your base of strength from men to God. For woe to those I lean on man. For vain is the armor of flesh. Change address. Change address now. Relocate before you suffocate. Change address from man to God. That's what you should be doing now. Run away from crowd. Run away from crowd. They don't have to be the one to tell you run away from crowd. They are saying that you should avoid places with crowd. I'm saying run away from crowd, both physically and in the spirit. Don't do bandwagon. Find the heart of God for yourself. Let your secret place be genuinely secret and be full of fire of God. Not good, not goosebumps. How do you know that you are delivered from goosebumps? that you choose God even when you don't feel like. That you wake up and, for, and you ask him, how are you? How can, I, how can I help you today? How can I make your burden lighter? What can we do together? How may I be of service to you? At that point, you have left this, the place of feeling. Or you have gotten to a place of choosing him above all else. This is your posture. This is what you should be doing. From 2018, 2019, those that are with me already knows what God told me to do ahead of 2023. And I'm, in fact, I'm almost done. To do, am I correct? Can you confirm to them, please? Is there anything I'm doing today that you know 
that I did not tell you there, or that that is not part of the thing that God has told me to do, even up to my work, even up to my family. He owes me. It's too late. I can't come back anymore. I'm gone. I can't come back anymore. I've lost my way back. That that is fortunate or unfortunate, and I don't have any regrets. And as I'm aligning to the things he told me to do, he's picking up my bills. I don't have any 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 need to come and be go and be knocking people's house to collect money from them so that I will lose my voice. Speaking of my bills. Is he picking up your bills? Or you are the one running your own bill yourself? Because anyone that runs his bill in this season will run down. Oh yes, it will run down because you never have enough to catch up. The inflation that is hitting the world is driving the world to a global recession. It's taking the world to a place that everything will almost cut. People will turn and hit themselves for lunch. No kidding. So don't think what is coming is, oh, don't worry. It always happens like this. You know, economists would always say, uh, always tell you oh, things will normalize. It always happens like this. This one is not normalizing anything. Abnormal is now normal. And then many people will die because they don't, they are not prepared for riding the abnormal. They they have been taught that abnormal is temporary and then things will turn back. In this season, it is now permanent for things not to turn back the way it used to be. And so people are not prepared and that's what will cause the major problem that will make people to be killing themselves, depression up and down and all of that. Change address. Change address. Now in, on, in following God, you will understand when you understand the profitability matrix of heaven, you will know why Professor kept talking about God being emotionless. I've never met her. And she has never met me. But that is one great addition to my life and I'm grateful for. At least I know I'm not mad. When you compare notes and what he says to you <laughs> in your secret place, in your in your bunker, he has said to some people, oh, you don't know the joy. It's so much joy. So much joy. Especially when he says to you, to a generation that is older to you, your own generation. And, it's so good. God is showing that is it transcends generation, it transcends time. So it speaks to the whole, it speaks to the new. The woman with the issue of blood had a 12-year problem. The daughter of Jairus was 12 years old. Jesus took care of the two of them. What does that mean? As I'm taking care of the new, I'm taking care of the old. The God of the living, I'm the God of the dead, I'm the God of the mountain, I'm God of the valley. No difference. She said something to me. She said, we are the same. All of us are becoming the same. And I jump out of my bed. Like a wonderful, graceful woman. We had known her long, long ago. But things come out in their time. So I'm enjoying my company. Hallelujah. It is important for you to understand that God's business is very critical to his heart. 
doesn't joke with this business. In fact, the Holy Spirit is given for the profit of all. Have you read that place in your Bible? I think Holy Spirit is given to profit with all. His Holy Spirit is given for that purpose. You hear in some of the parables that Jesus would give about a master giving talents, give one to one, he gave two to the other, he gave five to the other, and the one with one. Did you see what he said? I know that you are a, you are a, you are a master that want to reap where he did not bestow labor. And you know what that master said? He said, it's okay. You could have just, you could have just keep my money in the bank. What's, what's in that emotionless? Do you see the argument of that guy? You didn't even care how I felt. You didn't even care. You just came. You just said that I should give you. Ah. Thank you, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one to prof for the profit of all. Are you seeing that? <laughs> when he when and, and God spoke to them in Deuteronomy, he said, You shall remember the Lord thy God because it is He that gives you power to get wealth. To get wealth for what reason? To get wealth for self-aggrandizement? No. To get wealth to enrich Baal? No. To get wealth to, to, to strengthen the courts of, of the lawless man of Antichrist? No. To get wealth into the kingdom. And these are intangible assets. I'm not talking of car, I'm not talking of more property. No, 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 I'm not talking of that. Wealth to influence nations of the earth. The major dimension of this profitability matrix sits with becoming and doing and the platform the trading platform for becoming is the father of spirits every good and perfect gift come from heaven through the father of lights that's the second trading platform the first one father of spirits someone help me look for where where there was a description uh, and 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 there were and and the inscription in that description was Father of spirits. Baba, I mean, I'm waiting for someone to, to put that here. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man. Do you see that? A hard man, men that don't show emotion, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew I reap where I'm not so. You see that God did not deny. The master did not deny. He, made, he stated his qualities clearly. And that's why when professor was saying God uses his emotion in a way you do not use your emotion. I, <laughs> he was touching some chords. Yes, he laughs. Yes, he cries. Yes, he sings. Yes, he senses. Yes, he, he, you know, he does all those things. His, his heart becomes saddened. But not in your own way. He doesn't do that emotionally and sentimentally. He doesn't say, well, it's my son. If he invests in you and he has done everything to make you become, and you are not becoming, like the children of Israel, they will wipe you out. They will wipe you out. And he won't even bat an eyelid at all. He will destroy you completely. You know, this generation that they don't know the consuming fire of God. They don't know that dimension of God. It scares me. That you will look all mushy, mushy. Oh, God is merciful. God is, is, is sweet. Oh, if not for his mercy, it's not for his mercy. I'm not seeing the mercy of God, the grace of God. But when I get to a place and people ban that too much, and I check the content of their heart, it's... I just, I just get irritated. What are you hiding? You, as you know that, as you know, is a gracious God. You also need to know it's a consuming fire, so that you be guided properly, guided, so that you know that the things He says to you, if you want to take Him for granted, or you think you want to be a familiar spirit and familiarize yourself around Him, He will cut you off 
and it will look like you never knew him. Oh, he knows how to do that a lot. He will pack all his grace, pack everything away from you, and you will look like a desert. Furthermore, we have heard human fathers who corrected us and have and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? This is the first trading household name of God. And it is called the threshing floor of becoming. It is through the father of spirits that the Holy Spirit will work in you to make you test every spirit, whether they be of God. This generation, I hear a lot about discernment. There is no, there is no discerning. Oh God, there is no, there is no spirit of discernment. There is nothing like that in the Bible. If you, if you find it, please bring it out. I want to see it. You can discern. There is no, there is no discernment of spirits. No, there is nothing like that. Why? Because it is only the work that the Holy Spirit does in a man to make him become a fruitful vine, to make him become a planting of the Lord, a righteous man from within. That work is the one that will make him know. Make him know which spirits work in and around him. And how will he know? You remember when Moses was telling his people that God wishes that all his sons were prophets. Why? Because a real man, a true man that the Holy Spirit is working inside of naturally will be prophetic. Why? what informs his prophetic lifestyle because as the spirit walks inside of him the spirit bring him into the dimension of lights he, he exposes him into the dimension of lights and every part of his life begins to receive the illumination of the light of god so that there won't be anything in his life that will not be judged Everything will be brought to the open. Everything will be brought to the open. At that point, the Holy Spirit begins to show forth the Lordship of God in his life. And so the Father of Spirits, the dimension that the Holy Spirit uses to do his work inside of him, will fully establish in him where to eat, where to graze, what to do. At that point, you can sit before and around people and you begin to feel their pain. You begin to hear their thoughts. You begin to hear the things that they are saying in their heart unscripted. You begin to read their lips and you begin to look at their heart. You begin to see the dichotomy. You begin to see the discordant tone. You begin to see the lack of light or oneness or one accord in it. You begin and it begins to help you to guide your affairs to not to not to commit yourself to them so that you won't be destroyed. And as this begins to happen, it begins to make you to enter into the trading floor of the world where the devil is looking for your head where the devil is looking for your price, where the devil would knock on the door of Jesus in search of the egg of Peter. Why? Because he knew that Peter would be one of the people that would be the pillar of the church, of the early church in Antioch. And he would want to get his head very, very quickly. But Jesus prayed for Peter. And he prayed that his faith would not shake. And he said, when you are converted. So meaning, when Peter was with Jesus, he was not converted. He was a journey. He was a journey. So that on the trading floor of God, God will be done with Peter's life and take him to a place that God will receive profits. Profits from his life. 
He will go out there. He will speak word of God fearlessly. And men will come to God and say, what must we do? How, how can we be saved? That is the planting of the Lord coming in and God receiving dividend on the business that he has, he has made, on the investment he had made on Peter. He was with him for three years. He did everything. He prayed for him. And so when he went to heaven, he commissioned him. And no, no wonder he was, he, Peter was one of the major voices because the investment of God had come to fruition in the life of Peter. Everyone couldn't deny it. Earth couldn't deny it. Everybody could not deny what had been done in his life. So all these pressure points in your life and odd spots in your life, these things that are very hard for you and how God is even dealing with you in your finances, dealing with you in every aspect, is such that this Holy Spirit can form Christ inside of you such that you can then begin to receive the light of God, to begin to know the heart of men around you so that his light will begin, his spirit will begin to form himself, Christ inside of you to know the spirit that is moving around you, to test every spirit. As you are testing, God is trading. God is trading. He's telling you, don't put your head here. Put your head here. Go into business with that one. Go into this. In the third year, leave that business. Do this one. Do this. Go here. It is when the spirit has fully formed himself inside of you and the lordship of God has put the mark of Christ on you so that no man will put anything on you. Paul said, let no man trouble me for from now I bear in my body the mark of Christ. That is the trading such that you go to the earth on the trading of the earth where devil is looking for men. Once he sees you that you carry the mark of Christ, he avoids you completely and you will not die with the wise men in Babylon. Do you understand it up to that point? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation, not shadow of turning. This is the second trading household name of God, Father of lights, so that he can bring illumination and so that he can make his illumination to be clear, clearly different from illuminati of the world. You will know what the true light is. You will know what the fake light is. You will know the light that has darkness in it. You will know the darkness that has light in it. And you will know the light that carries the true light. And so you will not be confounded in any way. You will not come into the place of downtime in God. A place where you would believe that, oh God, like these are low moments in God. There are no low moments in God. This generation has lied to itself. There are no, there are no low moments. God is always at the peak of his power. When you are tired and you are humble and you tell him, he will fuel you with his energy. He will raise you up. There are no downtime in God at all. At all. There are no downtime in him. I know downtime in him. That's why in him there is no variableness, neither is there any shadow of turning. If you look that up in the message Bible or in another version, you will see that he says God is always at the peak of his power. He is always hundred fold dimension, not thirty fold, not sixty fold, but hundred fold dimension. The father of lights. That's the trading household name. Now, when that household name and walks in you and confirms himself inside of you. Every business that you do for God, standing before God, the investment of God will yield hundredfold always in your life. It means whatever God has called you to do, you would enter into the fullness of God's dimension in that thing. A lot of us, yes, though doing what God has told us to do, we are not earning hundredfold. We are earning thirtyfold. We are earning sixtyfold because of our level of yieldedness to God. It is when you traverse between the Father of Spirit and the Father of Light that you can boldly enter into the place where you will have a broken heart 
A lot of Christians are not broken. They are not broken at all. And that's why you find a lot of them talking too much with very little life-changing personality. Brokenness means a lot in the spiritual dimension of transaction. A ground that will yield harvest must be followed. Is called break up your fallow ground. Brokenness is very critical. The field, as uh, Jesus stated in the parable, okay, of the sower, the field is the heart of man. And so that heart must be tilled. It must be broken. When it's broken, uh, it can now uh, uh, receive seeds and then the seeds will germinate and hundredfold pump harvest will come from it. This was the experience of Isaac. Isaac, stay in this land and you will reap in this land. That word that God said to him, Isaac kept it in his heart. His heart was broken and ready, followed already. And, and, and at that point, uh, what began to happen in that same year, Isaac planted a leap hundredfold, animal, human, everything. How do you plant a, a, a seed into the ground and reap animal and reap human and reap all those? For you to know that that planting that was mentioned there is not physical planting, is the heart of Isaac that entered. You can see, and I think it was in, in Leviticus or in Numbers, uh, the, 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 the prescription of God for following of the ground. He said to them in, 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 in there that the children of Israel, you will use seven years to till your ground, to work on your ground. From the seventh year, you will do nothing. Seventh year, eight, nine, ten. It will be three years you will follow. Three years it will be, it will be there. You will not touch it at all. And what did he say? He said the harvest that you get in the seventh year, was it seventh or sixth? I can't remember now, will be enough to take them through the years of following. You see why? Because in the period of the harvest from years one to year six or seven, the, the, the harvest that they receive is hundredfold harvest. That harvest that will be enough, much more than the others. This is the matrix, this is the profitability matrix of God. And so when man will not yield himself to be malleable and flexible in the hands of God, to be pliable in the hands of God, to go through the threshing floor of the Father of Spirit and the Father of Light, what then begins to happen will be full of calamity and regret because God in one fell swoop can wipe out the generation of such a person. It's okay to miss God than to walk halfway with him. This is what he meant by uh, lukewarm, okay? It's not like he wants lukewarm people. No, if you are cold, it's bad enough that you are cold. It's fine. If you are hot, well, no problem. But if you are lukewarm, I can't do anything with you. That's why it means it's dangerous to walk halfway with God. You have to make up your mind. Am I going the long haul? Have I, have I counted the cost? I told you what the costs are. Have I counted the cost? And am I going this way? If I'm going this way, but I don't have the strength, I ask for the strength of God. As long as there is the willingness, the ability will be provided of God. And even the willingness also will be provided by God because both to will and to do of his good pleasures are not of us, but of him. Check all through the scriptures. Those that could not make themselves available for the profitability matrix of God, for them to be used of God and for God to take glory over their life. God destroyed them, wasted them from the garden and from the, from the wilderness to the days of Jesus. God destroyed them. When Jesus was speaking, he said to them, the, 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 there will be no stone that will be left unturned here. 40 years after Jesus died, that particular temple was raised down. Many, many years after, 
the Roman Empire rose up and they dealt with the children of Israel. They dealt with them and wasted them. The place where that temple erected, the mosque, is standing there today. If you would not align for, the, for God to hone his investment in your life, he will cancel you. He will cancel you. He, he does not need to kill you. You would just by him leaving you, that person is done. <laughs> that person is done, it's finished. He would you just be looking for God everywhere. Count it a great joy and privilege for those of us that God has blessed with the with Himself, with the presence of Himself. Count it a great joy. Because people are looking for the truth. This one that you are hearing every day. Please don't take it for granted. People, great men, great, great, great men of God, they are looking for it. That thing that professor said about that man of God. Oh, God bless you for being selfless. God bless you for using yourself as an example. God, I sat in the, in the presence of a man of God when he was telling me how reputable men of God have confessed to him that they, they listen to themselves to preach. <laughs> they have stopped listening to God. It's themselves now that they are listening to. So one of them said, well, I must confess. That this your book, this your morning devotional. I I I I consulted to preach, <laughs> and I shook my head. My God, hey, hey. and I shook my head. I got home that day, and I started rolling on the floor. I said, God, are you that cast to them? He told me. He said, Don't ever take me for granted. <laughs> this one that I'm I'm raining upon you. Different words are coming, and you turn here. I'm, I'm talking to you. You sleep. I'm, I'm teaching you from out of your sleep. You are in the bathroom. I'm taking over you. You are just sitting down and watching movie. I am in the midst of the movie talking. You are watching. You say, just let me watch the documentary. I entered into the documentary and I started talking to you. Oh, it, it doesn't happen like that. Too. Even with those that have called themselves great men, it does not happen like that. There is no life that God cannot abandon if he cannot find his full dividend of receiving glory from their life. There is no, there is no amount of work he has done that he cannot. He will wipe them out, wipe them clean, take everything he has, and then he go. It's so much a great privilege. And so much. So don't take it for granted. He must take glory over your life. He must. And he will do everything to take you to that threshing floor. He will test you. He will send the devil your way <laughs> to tempt you. He will set persecution on your way. He will give you pain. <laughs> He will, he will watch how you will. You will call on him, whether you will figure it out on yourself or you will call on him to help you. He will watch whether you will spend more time with him and talk to him. You know, when we are, when humans are, are good, when things are going on well, have you noticed? They don't come to God. Notice the time you don't come to God the most is when you are in affluence and you are doing well and all of that. But once there is a crunch like this, uh -huh, then you know your way to God. It has to thoroughly prune you, thoroughly work on you to be sure where your heart is. That even when you are, you know, in season and out of season, you choose it. At that point, he can now begin to form himself inside of you and give you power to become. And then you can do, you can go everywhere being his witness. Go everywhere being his witness. And then you can do, 
and he's so sure that what you are doing will not enter into your head. He's so sure that the little progress reports that you are receiving will not destroy you because you have already received the power to become and he is guiding you along the way, every step of the way, making sure your heart is broken. Greatest problem we have in my generation, our hearts are solid, like a heart of stone. It's not broken at all. It's not broken at all. God needs to break it. On this one will I look. On this one that has a contrite heart, a broken heart, a broken heart, a contrite spirit and a, a broken heart. This one will I look. Stop us in my generation. We are not familiar with that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for today. I will stop here. This particular message today, listen to it. Lock yourself up and ask God to create his factory inside of you. A factory where he will, where he will use as his production sites production sites of taking glory over your life, of taking full dividend of your life, making sure that your entire life give glory to him so that his dimension of the father of spirits and the father of life will be found inside of you so that you will complete in him, not manipulated in any way, not tossed to and fro, no, you will complete in him with the head of all principalities and powers be sufficient unto him and to, to every woodworking lacking nothing but whatever you lack you know you don't need hallelujah thank you Jesus wow it's two thirty already thank you Lord are you blessed today Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you blessed? You have an understanding of what is happening now? For all those things my hand has made and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit who trembles and my word a contrite spirit and a broken heart you will not despise contract spirit and a broken heart but the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and a contract heart these oh God you will not despise that's exactly what came out of my spirit thank you so much for bringing that out Brokenness, brokenness is God's template for establishing his factory inside of a man. Template for establishing his own kingdom, for establishing his own institution in a man so that he will take full dividend of his life. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Is there anything I crave for today and tomorrow and for all time is that you will make me to become your own. To become your own first and foremost so that I can do your will. And if I will not become, then don't let me do anything. Help me to become. In the name of Jesus. Becoming is very tedious. It's the most difficult and the place where you spend the most time. Doing is, is the one doing it anyways. Doing is not what you do. Becoming is what he does inside of you that you also become rather. You become. He does. Christ. 
you become idols. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I honor you today. I give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have to stop here. We continue tomorrow. You will begin to open and open and open up to us. Begin to open and these things. Don't just gloss over them. Let that deep work be done inside of you. Let the deep work be done in the name of Jesus. This is the reason why you find men that are respected in the world, great men of God and everything. And they still exhibit some characters and you're like, God, what is this? You heard what professor said. Like, God, where is this coming from? What, what is happening here? Because they concentrated so much in doing not becoming. And when such people die, you will see accolade, all manner of accolade. Oh, he's in heaven right now. Blah, 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 blah. Some of the names that we say they are in heaven, God doesn't have such witness. If by doing, some of us will not even enter into some temptation. I know those, not that I heard, I know those that in, in, in being delivered from the flesh, they fasted 40 days. The day they broke the fast, they slept with woman. One day, we left. You think this thing we call flesh? It's a, it's, <laughs> oh my God. If the Spirit of God will not help us, we are doomed, pure, pure and simple. We would, we would be like them too. There is no difference. We we'll just be like them. We we'll exhibit the outward trappings and the outward blah, blah, blah. And people will, you know, pump and pageantry. They will respect us. They will celebrate us. But deep down inside of us, we are lost cause. What a terrible place to be. And unfortunately, that's where most of God's people are, especially God's men. May his help come for me and for you so that we will be broken. It was brokenness that separated Paul and Saul from David. David's heart was broken. Saul's heart was not. It was clear. Very clear. Those that are broken, their oil will come from a horn. Those that are not broken, their oil will come from a flask. You know the meaning? <laughs> well, for your oil to come from horn, it means an animal had died. It means God had Yes, my goodness. God had slain his son from the, for the foundation of the earth. I squeeze out his blood for you. So that anointing comes out of brokenness, out of somebody's life, a sacrifice. Brokenness comes with deep sacrifice. But the one that comes with flask is so sophisticated, nobody died. So there is no brokenness. That was the difference. A lot of us, when we stand before God and God gives instruction, we lean on our power. You are not broken because you will not do the work the way he wants it done. Those are the people when God says, do this, he say yes, sir. Then he turns and goes. He won't even go back to ask him, how, how, how do you want me to do it? 
And he tells me, I need you to pray and pray like this. I turn back to him, sir. Give me the words I will say. It is only when God speaks to you and you turn to him and tell him in his word what he has spoken to you. That is when and only when the resources will come from a stable in heaven to you on earth. Else, and he tells you to do something and you go and do it your own, you get your own re result and your reward, not his own. But if he tells you to do something, you go back to him and say, how do I do it? Teach me, Lord, what should I say? You want me to pray like this? What should I say to you? What do you want to hear? And you begin to see him teaching you. Say, go into this, the word of the Lord. Dig this out. Dig this out and use it to talk to me. And that's it. It's done. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If by doing miracle, the, the, the church in the wilderness will not be destroyed. If by doing miracle, the, the generation that witnessed Jesus' ministry will not, should, should not have been destroyed. But they were all destroyed because a miracle cannot save a man. Doings cannot save a man. It's becoming a can save a man. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. See you tomorrow. By his grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.